Good day everyone. Welcome to another lesson for the course NJEC 11 Arts and Humanities. Our discussion will be mainly from the book of Arnulfo Ramos, Art Appreciation for the New General Education Curriculum. Before we start, we have here a quote saying, A photo is worth a thousand words. Do you agree with this saying? Do you believe that a photo is worth a thousand words? What does it mean? Basically, it says, an image can tell a story way better than words. A photo can give us more insights, more perspective than a worded essay. With that being said, in this lesson, we will appreciate more the beauty of photography, how did it develop, and what are the different types of photography. And here are our learning outcomes or learning objectives for this lesson. At the end of the discussion, you will be able to recognize the history and importance of photography, appreciate the rule of third in photography, discuss the types of photography, demonstrate understanding of the essential components and features of a camera, and display an ability to do photography. Let us first talk about the origin of photography. The word photography is from two Greek words, photos or phos for light and graph for lines or drawing. Therefore, photography is described as the art in creating or drawing durable images by recording light using either photographic film or image sensor. That is according to Spencer of 1973. The word photography was first coined by Sir John Herschel in a lecture before the Royal Society of London on March 14, 1839. He discovered that the images could be made permanent and completely resistant to reaction with light by reacting the silver halides with sodium thiosulfate. Therefore, the hyposolutions became the means by which photographs were made permanent. Essentially, the purpose of photography is to communicate and document moments in time. But according to PortraitsRefine.com, there are eight reasons why photography is important. First, photos represent what's important. The reason why photography is important is that it freezes memories. Diba? Kumukuha tayo ng mga larawan para meron tayong balikan kapag tinitingnan natin yung mga pictures na yun. We take pictures that we think significant events are happening in our lives. Second, history through images. What does it mean? It shows that a picture can help us understand and teach history. People connect with images and it shows how life was before the present time. It shows how um, things were happening before, the animals, um, events, and other things around the world are passed on generationally through images. Photos are stories. There's a story behind every image. As mentioned in the preliminary of this discussion, a photo is worth a thousand words. Just by looking at the picture, we can conclude what is happening who are the people involved in that particular event. And if we are looking at uh, photos taken by taken in our family reunions, in our family events, we will be reminded of what specific moment and what emotions were evoked during that particular event in our life. In relation to that, the fourth importance of photography is that photos evoke emotions. The reason we feel emotions isn't because of how aesthetically pleasing an image is, but the emotions that are expressed in the photo. Next is self-expression. One of the best reasons that photography is important is because it allows us to express ourselves. We can be creative, we can express how we feel, what we believe, what we think, and what are the things that we love because of photography. Photography inspires. Photography can inspire us to travel, to enjoy life, to celebrate the moments in our lives, and it can help us become more aware of the little things in our life. Just by taking pictures, 
we can be inspired to have more desire to experience more and take risks. Builds connections. Through photography, we can meet a lot of people and uh, build relationships we wouldn't have had previously. It could be with our friends and family whom we don't see often. It helps us to feel close when we see their images. And lastly, photography doesn't judge. Regardless of your age, your gender, or race, you can take pictures and capture memories. It doesn't require an expensive camera. You can even use your cell phones. And uh, you can start anytime and anywhere. So those are the different importance of photography. But of course, aside from these eight reasons given, you can think of more reasons why photography is important. Now let us talk about the digital era of photography. At this point, we will talk about how cameras evolved from the very first camera being used up until the type of cameras that we are using in the present. But before talking about how it evolved, let us define digital photography. Digital photography is the art of manipulating and producing digital pictures. It uses electronic photo detectors to capture the image focused by the lens. The capture image is stored as a computer file ready for digital processing, viewing, and publishing. The technique in photography originated during early to mid-1600s. It started from the camera's predecessor known as the Camera Obscura. As you can see, we have here an illustration of how Camera Obscura looks like. Camera Obscura is from the Latin word which means dark room. Camera Obscura is a box wherein the, when the light went through the pinhole, it formed an image on the glass. Famous artists of Renaissance who used the Obscura were Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo. In the 1820s, Joseph Nips, a French scientist, improved the lithography, which is defined as a method of printing technique which is based initially on immiscibility of oil and water. Joseph discovered a way to copy engravings into glass using a variety of materials. When the light shined through the paper, it burned an image into dark bitumen which created an almost identical image from the original. In the year 1900, photography became available to everybody. Its fame started with George Eastman, who was the founder of the Eastman Kodak Company. The first camera opened to the public was the Kodak No. 1. On October 17, 1969, Williard Boyle and George Smith of Bell Laboratories invented the charge couple device or CCD. This is a type of sensor that is used to capture an image by taking the light and translating it into digital data. In December 1975, the first recorded attempt in the building of a prototype digital camera was made by Stephen Sasson an engineer at Eastman Kodak. This camera weighed 9 pounds and can record black and white images to a cassette tape. To view the photos, the Kodak engineers had to develop a unique screen. It was able to capture a 0.01 megapixel image and took 23 seconds to record a copy to the tape. In 1988, the first real digital camera that recorded images as computerized file was produced by the Fuji DS-1P. During this year, the first JPEG and MPEG standards were fixed. JPEG means Joint Photographic Experts Group and MPEG means Moving Picture Experts Group. These standards set in a place a universal format which allowed images and video to store it in a compressed form which can be recorded to a 16 MB internal memory card. Up until the present, we still use these formats, JPEG and MPEG, but uh, nowadays we already have the PNG for the pictures and uh, recently we also have the GIF and uh, this MPEG is not uh, commonly used nowadays. Meron na tayong tinatawag na MP4 format and the AVI. 
In 1990, the cam model became the first commercially available digital camera. It also sold the Logitech Photoman. It used a CCD image sensor, stored pictures digitally, and connected directly to a computer for download. And of course, nowadays, we have so many available digital cameras in the market. We have the DSLR. We, also, we can also take pictures through our cell phones which is more efficient when we transfer it to computer or um, via phone to phone. Nowadays, we can also upload our photos and uh, videos in the internet, mainly different websites and social networking sites more efficiently, and it would take uh, less than a second for it to be uploaded, especially if you have strong internet connections. Now let us talk about the rule of thirds composition. One of the main factors that differentiate a great photograph from an ordinary one is composition and how our objects and subjects place in the shot. According to expert photographers, the rule of thirds is a great compositional technique for making a photos more dynamic and exciting. According to the rule of thirds, Image should be divided into nine equal sections created by two equally spaced horizontal lines and two equally spaced vertical lines. Then, you align the points of your interest in your shots. For example, in this picture, we have the cat. The alignment of the cat is in between or in the intersection of the points. According to Peterson of 2003, aligning a subject with these points create more composition, energy, and tension. Using the rule of thirds can also help produce nicely balanced, easy-on-the-eye pictures. Also, as you have to arrange things relative to the edges of the frame, it helps get rid of small subjects surrounded by the vast space syndrome. Next, let us talk about the different types of photography. The first one is aerial photography. It refers to taking of photographs of the ground from an elevated position. It is acquired through the use of specialized camera mounted such as fixed wing aircraft, helicopters, drones, balloons, kites, and even parachutes. Next is astrophotography. It focuses entirely on taking images from space and this type could vary from the planets to the stars or any other exciting configurations in the sky. Then we also have what we call commercial photography. This is a photographic work done for commercial purposes such as corporate brochures and leaflets, menus in cafes and restaurants, magazine advertising, merchandising, and product placement. It has various types, such as the following. Advertising, architecture and interior, automotive, food, jewelry, journalism, product, and sports. Next is fine art photography. It refers to highly creative images that have abstract influence. These photographs can be equal to an artist's expression on painting. Next is forensic photography. This is also known as crime scene photography, wherein the work of the photographer is mainly to capture images for an accurate representation of the scene of the crime. It is also used to take pictures of physical evidence in order to provide a permanent record for the courts. Headshot photography. This type of photography focuses mainly on the person's face. This is also known as mugshots. Next, macro photography. This type of photography is about close-up images of a specific topic. It is commonly applied mainly to capture details of organisms or nature that may not be visible to the naked eye. And then we have nature photography. This is a wide range of photography taken outdoors. It has something to do with the nature, which means the main subject could be focusing on landscapes, wildlife, underwater, and plants' life as they are in the natural environment. Nude photography it is about the portrayal of human body in the naked form. Portrait photography it is all about capturing the mood of a person with an emphasis on the face and expression of the subject. Photographers of portrait photography 
must capture the personality of the subject or of the person by using effective lighting, backdrops, and different poses. Still life photography, it is all about capturing objects and camera that are deliberately grouped to create a particular composition. This requires the photographer to have an excellent lighting technique. Street photography, it is all about capturing candid images of public places or even people in their natural element. Candid means the poses, the actions, whatever they're doing are not choreographed by the photographer. It requires the photographer the skill to mingle with people and achieve the best frames. And the last type of photography to be discussed today is the travel photography. It involves capturing images of particular landscape, traditions, and customs, or even people from different places. And then we also have here essential components and features of a camera. You can just please have a go through of the images after this slide. I did not put too much emphasis on the on this part because uh, we cannot do hands-on exercises on how to use an actual DSLR camera. A digital camera has so many parts, but these are the most important ones. The viewfinder, built-in flash, reflex and relay mirror, camera lens, shutter button, and the mode dials. These are also some of the buttons that can be seen in a DSLR camera. Focusing screen, digital sensor, shutter, display, aperture, and zoom elements. And that's it about photography. Thank you so much for listening and please wait for further announcements and instructions in our class GC. Bye!